All right, hi everybody. Today we are talking with one of my favorite colleagues, Dr. Olivia Everlin. Thank you so much for being here and agreeing to be on my Meet the STEM Army series. Olivia, thank you so much. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Are you surviving the self isolation? Are you doing okay? Yes, we're doing good. I have um, three little kids, so um, yeah. So all of my roles during regular, I guess, life are just amplified by a hundred so mm -hmm. mom full-time now homeschooling teacher scientist um yeah advisor was, friend house cleaner, wife yeah. <laughs> all of it oh my goodness Everything. well for those of you who do not know Livia is an analytical chemist in austin texas and an assistant professor of chemistry at the university of texas with the mahorns yes uh, she's the inventor of the mass spec pen, featured on Grey's Anatomy, and was recently awarded the MacArthur Fellowship, which we all affectionately refer to as the Genius Award. So I am super grateful to have you here. Thank you so much for doing this. Tell me about yourself. Who are you and where are you from? Absolutely. So um, I, my name is Livia, and you may be thinking that's an unusual name. Well, that's because I am originally from Brazil. So I grew up in Brazil and went to college in Brazil and got an opportunity during college to do a summer research abroad. And in Brazil, like our summers are January, February, um, well, mid-December until mid-February. So it's pretty much winter abroad because I went to the Midwest to do research at Purdue University and went from Brazil, like tropical, amazing weather to under the snow in this tiny town. <laughs> you poor um, thing. So it, yeah, it was quite the experience in, in college, but it was incredible in terms of research and um, learning and growing as a scientist. And, and then I applied to grad school and moved to the US for that in 2008. So it feels like it's been forever. And uh, um, yeah, and stayed in the U.S. since then. So I got my PhD here, then my postdoc, and now I'm a uh, assistant professor in chemistry at UT. Um, love my love my my research and my lab, and in being a scientist and also a mentor and professor to my students. Um, I'm also a mom. I have uh, three children, as I said. Um, they're little, so my oldest is five, and then I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. So. They're all tiny. They're little. Yeah. <laughs> and I live with my family here in Austin, and we love the city, and we love being here. That's wonderful. Yeah, I love the city, too. It's it's absolutely incredible, although it's in the 40s or something now, or at least it was last time I was outside, which is just awful. Um, but <laughs> So my question is, where did you actually get your passion for STEM originally? How did you know science was what, or in chemistry specifically, mm -hmm. was your future? Yeah, so I have always been very curious. Um, so I've always felt this desire to really understand how things happen. Like I have a really hard time with like um, like partial answers to things. I'm say, you know, like, what do you mean? Like, because it is. Like, I always wanted to know more and explore things. And I love chemistry, of course. I love biology and math. So I was really more leaning towards biological sciences when I went to college. And I thought, you know, I knew for sure I wanted to go to science because, again, like, I love um, experiments and, and, and I'd been exposed to that because my dad's a scientist, so it was really a privilege for me to have his, um, you know, his example um, in just loving science and research. But, yeah, so then, like, I was leaning towards, like, more biological science and my dad was pushing me to go to chemistry and he said, you know, there's chemistry in everything. As a chemist, you can do biological science, pharmaceutical science, you can go to oil, and you can go to forensics, to biomedical research. And, you know, I decided to honor his <laughs> suggestion. And it was the best decision I made because, again, like I did chemistry and I love chemistry, but my passion really is um, clinical research and um, research that enables me to have um, an impact in clinical care and care for patients and um, very translational. So I love basic research, but what I really like to see is how are the things that we're developing really making an impact in maybe like a year time frame, not like uh, two decades. Um, so that's kind of like what keeps me going. And um, in my PhD and postdoc, this is really when I started to refine 
Okay, clinical research is what I love and, and that's what I'm going for. And so now that you are studying chemistry and you're actually here, you said clinical research is something like, can you take us a step further? Like, what are you actually studying? What are you testing? Yes. So what I love to do is to develop chemical technology. So techniques, analytical techniques that, you know, have been around for decades, if not centuries, and thinking, how can we refine these tools in a way that we can put them in the hands of professionals like surgeons and pathologists and oncologists, people that are literally treating patients every day and enable them to do the analysis in a format that's very user-friendly and that doesn't require you to have a PhD in analytical chemistry. Um, all of the work that I did in my PhD and my postdoc um, all the technology we had and techniques we had developed, they were very uh, powerful, but you had to be, you know, someone that knew mass spectrometry, that knew I am gas-based chemistry. It's not for the doctors and surgeons that have like an immediate need and it needs to be something that's an interface that, you know, it's applicable to their patients. So that's what we do today in my lab. We develop technology, we adapt technology, we refine, um, you know, not only chemical assays, but statistical assays and software and graphical user interface to make it into a platform that provides a user experience to clinicians um, that they don't even have to think that they're doing chemistry, but they are. Um, <laughs> the you sneak it in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, they love, I mean, a lot of our collaborators are like, no, we're doing chemical measurement. So they, you know, there's that edge to it, but we don't present it as like this complex chemical experiment. It's really more like a, a simple device. That's wonderful. Um, and so I'm curious, you kind of already answered my next question, but how do you think STEM is going to change or save the world? How do we use these devices to actually make big changes? Well, I think um, the one, some of what I said already um, in how can we, adapt technology to the general public or knowledge, not just technology, but people like you, okay? And I'm not just saying mm -hmm. that because I'm talking to you, but how can we improve our communication? Right. Or um, how can we make complex concepts into things that are translatable and usable? Um, because the reality is that everybody's doing chemistry every day and we just don't you know, have that way to communicate it or we don't really have the mindset onto it. And then um, getting the, the separation between scientists and society doesn't really benefit right, anyone. We need to be more integrated. And I think um, through technologies that are easy to use and implemented in, in, fact, in a way that um, it, you know, there's a sense of simplicity or with you, how you communicate scientific com the concepts in a way that's relatable and fun that can really make a huge difference in um, not, e not even just learning more and knowing more, but actually making a bigger impact on, on society. I love that. I love that you're saying that because that is so true right now, in, especially in the situation that we're in, scientists are our heroes. We're coming up, we're stepping mm -hmm. up and trying to do incredible research and we're, we're screaming about what's true and what's not true. And so it's so important right now for all mm -hmm. of us as scientists to make sure that we're working on our communication. Okay, one last question uh, before, because I know you're super busy and you got to go back to lab. Um, but this is a fun one. If you were to be an element, which one would you be? Ooh, wow. That is a really fun one. Can you think <laughs> I never thought of that? You've never thought of that? No. Uh -uh. Oh, well then I can give you some time. <laughs> it's gotta be lithium, no. Uh, it's gotta be, okay, it's gotta be carbon because um, I love people and I love organic matter <laughs> and that warmth of human being. And I think carbon really translates that, you know, as being like the major component of, of organic molecules in us. So oh. I'd go with carbon. <laughs> I love that. That's so sweet. I've never had anybody give such like a peaceful and wonderful <laughs> answer. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this is Dr. Olivia Everlin. She's a rock star. She's my version of Beyonce. So I want to thank you so much for coming here and taking time out of your incre incredibly busy day to try to get kids a little bit more excited about science and break down those barriers. We're just regular people out here doing research and having That's fun. True. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Thank, Thank you, everyone.